I'm Danielle. Welcome back to another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. Today we're talking with Mr. Terry Veal, right here in Harrison, Ohio. Terry's going to talk to us all about Morgan's Raid. Hi, Terry. Hello. How are you doing, Danielle? Good. Thanks so Good. much for talking with us today. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Thank you. So what can you tell us about John Hunt Morgan? Well, there's a lot to tell about John Hunt Morgan. First of all, just in general, he was a Brigadier General in the Confederate Army. Mm -hmm. His nickname was Thunderbolt. Mm -hmm. He was a very flamboyant general, like many of the Confederate generals. He was born in 1825 and died at an early age at 39 and uh, killed in action, which we'll talk about later. He was uh, started the, his career as a first lieutenant in the U.S. Army, then became a, a colonel in the uh, Kentucky militia, and then he was promoted to Brigadier General at a very young age in uh, 1862. He was uh, involved in the, some major battles for the Confederacy, the Battle of Shiloh, the Battle of Hartsville, and Morgan's Raid through Kentucky, Indiana, and Ohio. Uh, just as a side note, the Confederacy named their battles after towns, and the Union named their battles after rivers or streams. So that's why we have Shiloh, Hartsville, and Morgan's Raid. Uh, his raid through Ohio ended very quickly, uh, just a couple of months. It was, he was captured in in northern eastern Ohio in Salineville and uh, his raid ended there and surrendered to the Union troops there. Uh, somehow he was taken to Ohio Penitentiary in Columbus and somehow he either bribed his way out him, or him and his three compadres escaped from the Ohio Penitentiary in Columbus, caught a train to Cincinnati, I don't know if they snuck on or bought tickets or they were financed by somebody jumped off the train near the Ohio River, uh, commandeered a skip or a small boat, got across back into Kentucky. He got back into action as a Brigadier General for Confederacy, and he was killed, I believe, in Greenville, Tennessee, killed in action at age 39, and he's buried in Lexington, Kentucky. So Terry, what can you tell me specifically about Morgan's raid through Ohio, Indiana, and Kentucky? Okay. Morgan's raid uh, was started in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. He had around 2,500 men in his company. And the object of the mission was to divert Union resources, soldiers and, and other resources, away from the war effort to chase him. He was a, he was a diversion or uh, a pain in the, you know what, for the Union and he was pretty successful at it. However, he was not really supposed to cross in the Ohio River into Indiana, but he violated direct orders from General Braxton and came on into Indiana, into Ohio, and through his raid. Morgan's raid was essentially a highly publicized PR event. It wasn't effective. It, it wasn't designed to kill Union soldiers or destroy property. It was a diversion to chase him to tie up resources. It was a big PR campaign. Uh, he caused General Burnside, the Union commander stationed in, in Cincinnati, uh, quite a bit of headache chasing him, which he was supposed to do. So he was successful in that. But other than that, was really no impact to the war, just the diversion. It was a futile effort when they were desperate to try to win the Civil War. And so, Tell us a little bit of information specifically about Morgan's raid through Harrison. Okay, uh, fine. Brigadier General John Hunt Morgan and his men entered Harrison on July 13th, 1863, about 2,400 men as I said. Uh, so Harrison was invaded by a enemy force. So we were part of the Union and he was fighting for the Confederacy. So Harrison was actually invaded by an enemy force. It's July 13th, 1863. Well, they knew they were in the area, but they were not expected in Harrison, so they took them by surprise. There was no real tactical reason to invade Harrison. So he's here, showed up about one o'clock, 
Suppose they came across the Whitewater River, there was a wooden bridge there, and they burned that bridge so the Union would have problems chasing them, if they were, and that bridge would be located very near where the current bridge is now on State Street crossing the Whitewater River going across into Indiana. So they burnt that bridge. Came into town, were looking for replacement horses, they were looking for supplies, they were looking for things they could use in their conquest, their raid through Ohio. The, the recorded history says that they acted very gentlemanly like they didn't go house to house to raid people they didn't attack any women or other people they were using some etiquette of war not attacking the civilians and no shots were fired uh, I had one report read one report where they ran in a drugstore and they, the word they used was despoiled the drugstore of soaps and fragrances so maybe they were getting ready for Saturday night bath wherever they ended up in the river Another interesting point I found is they left the drugstore without taking the albums. So I thought to myself, what are albums in 1863? They didn't have photographs, they didn't have records, what kind of albums were they talking about? So I did a little research and found out the albums were confession albums or like a diary. They would, you would, the album would ask you all these personal questions about what what was your favorite poet? What color did you like? What kind of food did you like? Who were your friends? Who were your idols? What you didn't like? So you could compare that to kind of the today's Facebook page. That was their Facebook. So these albums were a very popular time and they left them. So they did relieve some people at the stores of supplies and horses. Uh, well, the horses were tired and worn out. They were no use to them. So like stopping in a gas station today, you had to stop and refill. So they would steal horses, fresh horses, and many times leave the, the tired horses behind, sometimes taking the others, and move on. So they did what they needed to do to keep their union, or their union, their forces together and travel on through their raid. After a few hours, three or four hours, they left town uh, peaceably, and they headed out Harrison Pike, which is now 52, headed east. And at New Haven Road, part of their forces turned and went out towards Crosby Township. Part of them went straight towards Cincinnati. So they were probably afraid of being uh, followed by the Union. They were chased by the Union and wanted to split up and make it harder for them to catch them. Some of the buildings in town that I know uh, existed at the time of the raid in 1863 was the current Market Street Grill, grill the Odd Fellows Building. It was built in 1850. The Presbyterian Church was there and it was built in uh, 1849, so it was there. And I believe the Becker's Bakery on Harrison Avenue and Market Street and Walnut that building still exists. That's three that I know of, and there probably were others that were here when Morgan came through in 1863. Thanks again so much for tuning in to today's edition of History in Your Own Backyard. Today we spent time in Harrison, Ohio, talking with Mr. Terry Veal all about John Hunt Morgan's raid through Ohio, Indiana, and Kentucky, and specifically through Harrison, Ohio. We certainly hope that you enjoy learning all about it. Remember, travel, travel slowly, slowly and, and stop, stop often. often. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.